Hello everyone and welcome back. We have ourselves another Marvel Monday. Hope you're doing fantastically out there. Of course, Steve and I are here, the skeleton crew, in isolation. More skeleton than Week ever, man. Week 16, Steven uh, lost a little bit of hair. Got the it's old gone. pandemic haircut. Yeah, I like it. It's nice and clean. Thank you. She uh, did a good job. She actually, uh, it's a little bit shorter on the sides. It goes from like that short to that short. Okay, well, like yeah. mil millimeters. Not, I, I dig it, uh, but we're, we're here. We just had our shawarma. No, we, had a, we had a great, uh, Robert surprised us with uh, Del Taco. And it was delicious. Yeah, and all of, probably all of $3 to get that feast. I uh, had no idea. Place. It's apparently a California thing uh, in line with like an in and out vibe, and it definitely was delightful. Uh, apparently so we need to try the guac. You need to try the guac. That's, a, that's next on the list, I guess. Uh, but if you missed it, last week we completed our seven week journey against Rhino Heroic 3. That's, that's was a don't want to talk about it again, Fine really. time. The relief this morning when I was setting up and realized that we weren't going to have to see his face was immense. Uh, but what we're doing right now, last week, Fantasy Flight Games revealed uh, the Once and Future, I think, Kang? Once and Future Kang, that's right. Uh, which is a scenario pack coming up after the Rise of Red Skull at some point, and I'm super excited for a few reasons. One, Kang is a fascinating villain in the Marvel Universe, which I'm excited to talk about. But two, is that the game itself, I think, just needs a lot more villains. So we have the Rise of Red Skull coming. That's five new villains and scenarios to play that tie together in a campaign-style fashion. Plus, we're getting another villain here. I, I'm also three modular sets. Oh, in the pack. Yep, that's a good deal. Yep, one of them is actually Kang, like rolling around. Uh, Apparently, that makes sense. Uh, one of them is the Tyrannosaurus Rexes. So you can always. Oh, that's add, a whole pack. You can add dinosaurs. Throw in I think the it's a modular <laughs> set. You can add dinosaurs to your thing. Uh, and then one of them is something else, something, you know, time-related. Nice. Well, I'm sure we that. might look at some of those in a second. Uh, <clears> worth <throat> noting, so we're going to be talking about all the stuff that was previewed for Kang last week, and then we're going to cut the stream, come back, and then we're going to play against the last villains that we haven't played against so far in heroic mode, which will be Wrecking Crew. We need to build decks, and I, I'm excited to basically just wipe clean all the thinking we've had to try to overcome Rhino. Right even now. think about it. And uh, pick some new... Uh, there's some heroes I'm excited to visit. It's like uh, Thor and Black Widow to me stick out because I didn't have a huge chance to explore there. Yeah, you should absolutely play Black Widow. And I probably will start with Miss Marvel because... Where you gotta start. <laughs> I love it so much. I like the knowing smile of just like what you have and to do. And then we need to figure out Thor too. We need to give Thor a better chance than we have in the past now that we don't have the pressure of Rhino to... Uh, to force yeah. our hand. Heroic 3 is just a tempo that I'm not certain all heroes are, are built for. And I do think Thor particularly, I mentioned on some stream last week uh, that he was fun, and I think he is very fun to play. But his curve is just such that like if you, some heroes, are if they're not fast enough, it just doesn't make sense to run mm -hmm. Heroic 3. So I think I can figure him out. Yeah, I think he's got potential. <clears throat> Which I'm excited about. So we're going to be doing that, talking about Kang, and then taking a, a quick breather before we come back in on the Wrecking Talking crew. about Kang. You ready to dive in? First of all, uh, what do you know about Kang as a, as a lore guy wise? who's more interested in lore than I ever expected? <laughs> You've been reading all the books. I mean, You've been down in so Flesh and Blood lore. You're the Sky Terror lore. It's like, what? I just finished Dune, by the way, speaking of lore. Wow. Just finished. If yes. we could get our hands on that game, we would play it. Man, uh, it's good. I can't wait for the movie. Now, but Robert and I were talking. We were talking. As, as, you, as you do. Uh -huh. uh, what if it gets delayed because of COVID? It probably will. What if they don't want to do a major theater well, release at the end of this year? I know that, so Amazon has the rights to do a Lord of the Rings television show, mm -hmm. and it's a new story. It's just oh, set really? in the universe. Yeah. Wow, that's how um, all these franchises need that. Yeah. Just fresh, get out of the standard. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a totally new story set in Middle Earth. But uh, they just recently got permission because of the way the lockdowns went in New Zealand, because that's where it's filmed. That's where the Lord of the Rings movies have been mm -hmm. filmed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they recently got permission to start filming again. Wow, okay. Um, in New Zealand, so that'll, yeah. that'll be coming. But, yeah, I mean, I would be nervous if I was a movie studio right now on when and how to, to release release movies. But as far as King, I'm going to say on the flavor thing, it surprises you, but also it's worth noting, most games that we've played, uh, see, like really gone into, think about it, though. It's like they are universes in lore that I am actually very into. That's true. So, like, Star yeah. Wars, Star I, Wars. Didn't, I didn't have to go learn about the lore because I was already knee-deep in it. I've time. heard you like Star Wars. Well, used to. We'll see how I feel <laughs> in the future. I love it. There's something very cathartic. It's kind of that, uh, what do you call that whenever you take pleasure in somebody else's pain? Schadenfreude? I don't know about that. It just seems demented yeah, to me. That's right. Well, but what I'd say about Kang is uh, he is a villain in Marvel, just bonkers kind of villain. Uh, his big thing is time travel. So uh, I was reading a little bit about him this weekend, and essentially it's like he went back to like 
Egyptian times, and like mm. I think he was actually even King Tut in in the the universe. Very cool. And he was trying to um, I forget his first name, but his last name is Richard. So there's like speculation that he's uh, kin to um, the Fantastic Four, uh, Mr. Fantastic, because mm -hmm. his name is Richards, and like that passes on. And it's like he goes back in time trying to uh, basically deal do with this kind of stuff. But also there's like speculation that he's actually in the direct lineage of Doctor Doom later on. Mm. So it's all Fantastic Four related, which is really interesting. I love Fantastic Four. Used to, Human Torch is my jam back in the day. I, I would love to see the Fantastic Four show up in this game and also something like Crisis Protocol. But uh, then he time travels to like, he tries to go back to his time mm -hmm. and he misses by like a thousand years. Yeah, just so a thousand up, years. He comes from like 3,000, the 3,000s, and he ends up in the 4,000s. Uh, and it turns out that's like a really grim future. Um, hmm. So he ends up going back to a point where he can kind of easily dominate the Earth. Uh, but then he bounces around all the time. So what he'll do is he'll be like, he'll come to whatever time zone, your time timeline your heroes are in, and he's like, ah, here's some T-Rexes that are a problem, right? Or Nice. Okay, so he's like a time guy. Yeah, or he'll like, sometimes he's good, sometimes he's bad. Sometimes he'll bring like a Tony Stark with him from a different timeline, and it's like it really creates some issues. Well, Cap's kind of a kind of a time a man out, man of, out of time as well. Does well, he have a king uh, a king like saga or anything? Are they are they linked up? I saw in one of the cards that it's Captain America fighting King. So is there? Do you know anything about that? There's a lot he, to keep. I up mean, with. he literally comes and fights the Avengers in all sorts of different ways at different times. And so part like of Deus Ex King, if you ever need a villain to. Yeah, it can you happen. Make so, like, save you or break you. Um, but it may, the main thing is, like, he can just manipulate time. And the, the Marvel comics themselves, there have been so many alternate timelines and timelines and the multiverse and all the stuff that's going on that, like, they pretty much tell story. I mean, there's a, a, a bunch of stories. Like, if you look at just the Wikipedia page for Kang, it's, like... Big. It's like Schrodinger's Marvel. Yeah, something about that. Yeah. Um, all right, you want to dive in? Let's take a look at what's yeah, going Michael on. Yeah, Michael's saying sometimes he's saying. All right, let's look <clears> at some <throat> of the previews. First thing we have here, you want? We flip down, or do we stay in this mode? We stay in this mode, don't we? I think we see. Yeah, Jonathan put them on the bottom here today. All right, so the first thing They're we covered my face. Let me it know. looks like I don't know what order these are in, but this is what we got. So uh, the Chronopolis is a main scheme, and it's three B. So this is going to be the third, the backside of the third scenario in the pack. Uh, force response after this stage is completed. Place one set aside Kang's Dominion face down under stage 4A. So there's four stages. That's incredible. Yeah. At the end of the phase, remove Kang, a mortal, and this stage from the game and combine your game area with another game area. So yeah. Game area. Check this out. Yeah. So i done some reading on this. This is in the FFG article as well. So what, what essentially happens is like at the beginning, you're, you're beating up on just a normal Kang together. And then once you defeat that first version, everybody plays a different version that only they're playing. So you basically, he sends you off on your own timeline. Yes, so you're in your own timeline with King. So every hero, once they defeat their mini King challenge, rejoins one of the other heroes who's currently involved in a King challenge until all heroes are back together and then they defeat that version together. That's fantastic. And then the final version of King comes out. Mm, from the what big I boss. Can tell. Yeah, the and then you all fight them together as the big finale. I right? love that. I, I love the Genius. idea, particularly of a um, of a scenario, because like solo, you could easily play it because you just get sent into a timeline, you have to be Kang, and it's three or four stages. Mm -hmm. But these scenarios, they get wildly more interesting when there's three or four players. Mm hmm. I'm all about that. That Avengers vibe, big like fight, it. crazy thing going on. And you kind of got to do your own thing, right? Yeah. And that can be fun. Mm -hmm. That can be really fun. Mm hmm. What do you got next? All right, the realm of Ramatut. See, I told you he went back. So into there's probably the, a the bunch top. of different one of these, and you randomly get assigned one, and then you go to some weird place. That's fascinating. So this is 3B as well. Moon scheme, force response after the stage is completed. Place one set aside Kang's dominion face down under stage four. At the end of the phase, remove Kang, Ramatut, and this stage from the game, and combine your area with another area. So you have the same same kind of vibes going on. This is going to be insanely fun. I, I it reminds me so we're gonna play Wrecking Crew today. It reminds me of that in that like it's going to be making the mechanics of the game function different than you've experienced. Mm -hmm. And that always gets me excited because it makes makes you realize how basically I think a lot of people early on were a little concerned that the that it was a little too linear, the mm -hmm. game. And this is just continuing to show like it's not what you expect. Show them as possible, yeah, yeah, really. All right, let's look at some of these. We have Kang the Conqueror. It looks like stage one. Uh, he has one scheme, two attack with a special yeah, that's reaction. That's nothing. Come on. He's tough. He starts with tough. He's got the temporal trait, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and when Kang attacks, 
uh, you either place one threat on the main scheme, or he gets plus two for the attack. So he's either a four, or he also puts one on the main scheme. Okay, that's fine. That, that's a good mechanic, too. I like that, where you can't min-max it too hard. You've always got to manage both, because like you can't just stay in alter ego, or you can't just stay in hero mode, and yeah. not have scheme to worry about. And then he says, when defeated, advance the main scheme to stage two at the end of the phase. Okay, so at the end of the phase, that's interesting. So even if the stage two doesn't advance itself, if you defeat him, that's the end of that round, you're going to stage three. All right, just fair enough. Also, he looks awesome. Yeah, it just looks great. Classic villain, really. Indeed. All right, so now we're going backwards in the main scheme, Phil. That's right. Uh, the As King the, that's, want, that's right. The Master of Time, 2A. Uh, the flavor says, Kang reels back, but he saves himself by separating the heroes through time and space. Winterville place one acceleration token here for each side scheme in play. Then discard each side scheme. That's a cool mechanic. Each player reveals a random stage 3A in turn order. Remove any unused stage 3 schemes from the game. Right on. So I assume it comes with four or more. But Could be more. Could be uh, you shuffle Could them be up, eight. and then everyone's going to get a random one. So on stage 3 is when you kind of divide out into the either. <laughs> How which cool is, is that? That's super cool. And that's, that's actually, so 2A, that's interesting. So the moment you flip to 2A is whenever you get a random... 3A. So yeah. all that it's all this this scheme is doing is distributing 3A, and then I'm guessing everybody goes to now 3A together, right? Because there's no 2A to defeat, as as I can uh, read it. It's well, not like it, you know. So this is 2A. So it would flip to 2B mm -hmm. after you resolve this text. But that's after you've revealed a random stage 3A. So I wonder if is 2B in the middle, and then 3A is all around everybody at the table, and then like once you defeat. 3A, do you start working on 2B? 2B I don't, or not 2B? I don't know. Or what not? Uh, we would need to see 2B, right? To, to be or not to be. To see uh, how that works. That's, that's interesting. Uh, maybe we'll understand as we go through here. So Kang Stage 2, the Scarlet Centurion. He's tough again. Uh, when he attacks, he gains piercing. Piercing goes through tough. Oh, not, I was like, what does that yeah. mean? Get rid of yeah, yeah. it's an anti Doctor uh, Strange tech there. When defeated, remove the present future war from the game. At the end of the phase, join another game area. Hmm. So, what I'm imagining is that this is going to be a villain that somebody's taking on. Like, this is a version. So, probably some of those three A's are going to reveal different versions of King. Mm -hmm. And so, everybody's going to be fighting a version of King. And when they defeat that version of King, they join another player's fight, yeah. basically. So you're going to see, like, you know, I imagine we'll see Egyptian Kang might be dealt out. You might see uh, that Kang. You might see all these various versions of Kang that everyone at the table is fighting against, which is pretty amazing. So Kang won the Conqueror, Kang the Conqueror. When he's defeated, you advance to stage two at the end of the phase, mm -hmm. right? And so then stage two, just so I can wrap my mind around this mind Master time of time, yeah. It's the Master of Time. When it's revealed, you place an acceleration token on it uh, for each side scheme. And then each player reveals a random 3A. So I assume 2A is out and everyone has I think so. their 3? I think everyone's 3A is going to say, get this version of Kang out of play and put it into play and gauge with you or something like Interesting. that. Interesting. Yeah. All right. But the fact that I don't know makes me excited to play it. Yeah. that just I wonder, they did a stream about it and they had an article, which I didn't read or watch either of those I things. did both. So, well, I watched the, uh, or I read the article. OK, so if there was more the context to be had, you would have it. Uh, next, we have Depowered. It's an obligation. You cannot play hero-specific cards. What? That's awful. Alter ego action. Discard a hero-specific card from your hand. Discard this obligation. Huh. This is an obligation, but I, this is in the deck. It's not even is yours. Is it interesting? Yep. He's literally dealing you out obligations rather than you just drawing your own. Hmm. Because like you got you got obligations. It's Kang. He's coming back and telling you you, you got problems. <laughs> you you definitely have problems. So this uh, is effectively if you're in your alt or hero side when you get dealt this card, going to the next round, it's like you essentially have to flip down, get rid of one of your hero specific cards to get rid of it. If you want to play here, it's very much like Arkham weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It's going to go into your threat area basically, and now everything you want to do is worse or hard. And you have the choice of, I can deal with it being hard and keep going, or I can take a second and lose time to get it out of my, my threat area. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. That seems brutal. It's an absolute classic. It looks like I, I saw somebody on the chat saying that maybe, uh, so tough just means you interplay with tough. Uh, and then Chris says it doesn't go through tough, it discards it first. 
Mm, so discards if you have piercing, hits. it discards it and then does the damage. True. Really. Otherwise, it would just be... Also, you notice Cap nothing. there getting all electrocuted. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's featured in a lot of these cards, yeah. so I figured you would know something about that. I mean, so villains that are on the scale of someone like Kang, as compared to Rhino, in the universe are usually there to challenge the entire team. Mm -hmm. Right? You have Ultron, you have Thanos, you have Kang, you have Galactus, where it's just like no one hero can really take this on. Yeah. Uh, so then they end up fighting everybody. It's really a story about teamwork. Yep. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, time travel hijinks uh, is the next. I read obligation. that as hunks from here, and I hunks. think it's way funnier. Time travel hunks. Yeah, art. the two two Iron Mans <laughs> with their strong jaws. Uh, temporal. I like Spider Man looking very confused in the background. Winterville, discard the highest cost card you control, then place it face down under this card. Alter ego action. Discard an electric slash energy resource from your hand. Discard this obligation. Um, so you put it face down and you discard that obligation to get it back? Well, so you discard the card, card first, so it's in your discard pile. Then it goes under the thing, which I think is the implication that it will return back to your discard pile. Yeah, it's Because that's where it came from. So this obligation literally just gets rid of your highest cost card. Yep. That's a bummer, dude. Yep, that, it's a real that bummer. That mansion gets real questionable. But hey, you can discard a uh, resource from your hand to discard the obligation. Not that you maybe would. I don't know that I ever would. You might. Maybe it goes back to you. Maybe maybe we don't know exactly how it, it works. I'm, if it works how we think it works, where it discards the card, then you would get rid of a card to then into your discard pile, put your highest cost card, which means it's not going to be until super late in the game that you would see that big card again. Unless now, it was a small card. And it says discard each face down card into this obligation. Now, are we going to see? Let me tell you the symptoms, some things that if I see this card, what I'm going to do as a designer I'm going to have a threat card or a treachery card that says trigger the win revealed effect of every obligation you control. So it's going to do it again and again and again if you keep drawing that from the encounter so deck. you have to deal with it. I'm going to have cards that say if you have, you know, take threat equal to the number of obligations you have in discarded kind of thing. Yeah. That kind of stuff. So I imagine we're going to be playing with these obligations stacking up, and if you don't deal with them, the, the deck gets worse and worse over time. That, that's fair. I've seen I've seen uh, <clears throat> Matt Newman and Arkham do this we, enough. We know. You know they're talking. You just know. You know, you know well they're now. talking. You know so, they're talking. It also even just generically, if you had cards that got progressively worse for the number of obligations you had, mm -hmm. not even I, you specifically have to see like that. to trigger this thing again, but even if it was just like add one threat to the scheme for every obligation in play, mm -hmm. it's like yeah. yeah, it should it should be a total hassle, which is kind of the idea, I think. Indeed. Uh, next, we get a side scheme that looks fantastic. Mm. Corrupted Time Stream. Players trigger alter ego action abilities on obligations. Hey, there it is. You just... Uh, oh, did we do it? Literally, yep, there, you go. there it is. When reveal, each player must either discard a random card from their hand or place two threat here. Okay, so it comes up with two. And then you either have to literally get rid of a random card... Wow. ...or discard two threat. This is going to be annoying. Interestingly, though, like a card for our... Uh, Whatever, unit of value. Expect you to EOV? UOV. Unit of value, yeah. UOV. You did it. You said it in describing it. Yeah, well, there you go. The UOV, <laughs> the unit of value. That's branding. So one card <laughs> for z no other resources removing two threat mm -hmm. probably is always the best. Like, that's good math. That's very good math. So yeah. you almost are compelled to do that unless you have a mega thwarting turn coming the up. The problem is it's random. Mm -hmm. It's random. I mean, random cards out of hand is always the worst one or the best one for Kang. Ultimately. Also, like somebody said here in the chat, I, you guys are like blowing it up, which is amazing. Um, apparently, Matt Newman helped design a lot of this. So that makes a lot of sense. And then also, the depowered thing is the idea that, that Kang went back in time to prevent you from ever getting those powers in the first place. That's fantastic. Isn't that funny? Actually. It's great, right? right? That's really great. It's great. Uh, man. Huh. Each player must either discard a random card from hand or yeah, place two random right does make that bad. Oh, yeah, and, and it doesn't go away when you do that. It just means that you either it comes in with four threat or it comes in with two threat and you lose a card. No matter what, that two threat is Yeah, yeah, it starts with on. the two threat. Yeah. But it's like if there's three players, either we all discard a card or we add six threat or you, some combination. Yeah, you probably have to discard that card, don't you? I'm trying to think of a card. You would have to have a card in your hand that's going to generate more than... Two get, for zero. I mean, get ready is always generating more than two at this point in our in our lifetime. But it costs you damage, like. Yeah. Eh. Anyways, but yeah, it's probably just taking cards, unless you just have a Bugatti turn. That's right. If you have the turn, sometimes the value of a card is way more than that synergistically. But mm -hmm. that's a that's a brutal. And sometimes just, you need threat to clear. I also just love this art. Yeah, it's great. 
lightning, lightning, purple lightning particularly is a thing. That's just really reminds cool. me of that spoils card, that token manipulating card. Do you remember the weird like guy with the had the helmet on with the green in it, and it would like double the number of tokens on a card, or you would get additional tokens for yes. everything. There was a whole little side thing that we mm -hmm. were doing with tokens. Yeah, at one like point. you always do. Looks just like it. I I agree. All right, next we have past machinations. It's a treachery card. Look how cool he looks. Uh, in sight one, this is going to be frustrating. Place one threat on the main scheme when this card is revealed. Mm, a new keyword, good. All right. It has a three boost, and it says, when revealed, each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for a different obligation and reveals hmm. it. Shuffle the encounter deck. You get to choose, too. Uh, that's so choose. bad. Another another three boost in the deck is Now, if your obligation annoying. is in it, that's not awful. You can search, flip. Yeah, exhaust. that's true. Yeah, that's true. And you can always get it from your discard pile. So in a weird way, this actually could be good, that it allows you a free flip to alter ego so that you can flip back up to hero. and If you're in a position to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, but sure. once you've done that once, this card gets really bad because you're going to go get all of his obligations. Well, but it, you can search the discard pile. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to remove it If you remove it from the game. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Smack. <laughs> Just hit something. Idiot. Uh, that's, this is good. I like villains that seem like they're going to be very frustrated. Now we're going to get to your favorite card. Okay. I love dinosaurs. Tyrann <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex. Zero scheme, three it's attack. The art. Something is so iconic. That has to be from a classic comic book or something. I've seen that before. It is comic book art. Yeah, so I must have read this at some point in my life. Or is um, it like a then. card, like a, some kind of Marvel card or Maybe. whatever? That's such a Zero scheme, three attack, six health, creature, temporal, tough, toughness, special when it's, uh, its attack gains piercing. So it's going to hit any tough status tokens, get rid of them, and he's hitting for and three. And keep going, and then he's going to come in with tough. That's it. But, you know, stay in alter ego and just go sit in the apartment. You don't have to worry about them. That's right. Just hang out. Another it's, three boost, by the way. Let's yeah, there's not a be, whole bunch of boost in Let's this. not sleep on that. It's somewhat terrifying. And it looks great. I love it. Don't, so, you, love, don't you love that T-Rex, though? Walking in the park and Kang just brings T-Rexes from thousands of years one ago. Of the, one of the greatest things has been the merging of, like, comic books with uh, dinosaurs. That was pretty cool back then. Uh, actually, it's been happening for a long time. The whole time travel, go back to the past, kind of all the way like Popeye and stuff. <laughs> uh, I love dinosaurs. I can't say that enough. I hope we get more dinosaurs Most do. in any capacity. Just give me more dinosaurs. Just more dinosaurs. But I'll then I can put that as a modular set. Is it is it say modular down there? What does it say? Uh, temporal? temporal? Six of seven? Yeah, it's, yeah that's so there's an entire set. temporal uh, modular just set. Crazy just crazy ah, Time travel is happening. It's like, ah, Kang must be back up to something no good. Super smart. Uh, speaking of Kang, Kang, Master of Time, we get another version here. He's elite, he's temporal. Now, you'll notice in the bottom it says Master of Time, one of eight. So this is the Kang you were talking about that's a modular set. Yep. Which yep. I, I, think, I think they should do this every time. Yes. Like, I wish there was a Goblin, Green Goblin modular yep. set. I wish there was a Wrecking Crew modular set. Because if you're going to introduce a villain, like, give me all that villain, right? Give, give me the ability for him to keep popping up in our story. Give me all of those modular sets, honestly. Yeah. I want to blow up all of these old villains with new modular sets and make it entirely new. Yeah. Uh, anyways, he has six health, one attack, one scheme. He's tough. He's villainous. When this card minion activates, give it a boost card. Have we seen elite before? He says elite. Now, elite is a common word in Arkham. It means uh, like some cards don't work against elite enemies. I... Have not. I don't have. You and I are the that. wrong people to ask this question. Yeah, <laughs> he, he caught me on that one. Chat would have to back us up on that. But uh, he acts like a villain, right? He gets a boost card, so he's an exception to the rule of minions. That, that's that's next level of power. Villainous, boom, nailed it. Perfect, yeah. right? Absolutely perfect. Uh, and then he has Kang, Master of Time, gets plus one scheme, plus one attack for each obligation in your play area. There you go. That's so it. I assume his modular set also comes with more obligations. It could, or you might have this modular set in the actual Kang thing, and you have a thousand different Kangs running around the board. Which yeah. seems fitting, right? Yeah. I, I, let's Once just you crack see. open time travel, nothing has to make sense anymore. Well, in the Master of Time set, like if the villain in it is going to reference obligations, I would assume, since it's a modular set, that he would bring some of those with him. And he might also be in the standard one, so there's just a bunch there's of just obligations. just Kang everywhere. Yeah. Or maybe that's a, that's a choice. Um, so that's just uh, a, another cool iteration of Kang. Uh, next, we get a future weapon. It's tech, weapon, it attaches to Kang. It does come with obligations, okay, according cool. to Justin. And this, this is from the Kang standard deck, it looks like, 16 of 43. But it's plus two attack, it's two boost, and it has a force to interrupt when Kang attacks, the attack gains overkill. 
If this attack damages a hero that hero is stunned, after this attack, discard future weapon. They're getting hip to the fact that allies are just blocking all the attacks. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, it makes sense that you then give ways for that not to be generically just the best thing since sliced bread. 100%. Yeah. No, that's correct. And in this way, right, it, more of this means that, in my mind, protection gets better and better, which is defense plus the shield mm -hmm. tokens plus the plus three. It's like sometimes that ability to not take damage saves you not just the damage, but also like all these bad conditions the that happen. and, and yeah. whatnot, yeah. So actually preventing all the damage is relevant. That's it's how not they, just an oh, anti protections role, right? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that that's does really make cool. a lot of sense, yeah. Do you know, uh, again, to put you on the spot, do you know when this is, did it have a release date or anything for this? I, it's the, f the first thing they've said is coming since they announced Red Skull. Is it after Red Skull? I assume it would be like the month or two after Red Skull. Well, I can't wait for Red Skull. Yeah, and last time, let's think. They put out they put out Goblin. When did that come out? That came out right after the core set. The whole early uh, release of Champions is a blur and, and confusion. And then it was... Uh, Didn't all three hit Cap at once? It was Captain America, Miss Marvel, and Goblin, but it was supposed to be Goblin first. <clears throat> okay. And then after Goblin, it was... Uh, there were two. Thor. Wrecking Crew? When Not did that yet. happen? I think it was Thor... There was somebody before Thor. Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. No, Miss Marvel no. and Cap. Yeah. Who was before Thor? We don't know. Huh. October, they say. Leave it to Ops. So that's that's October. Not that, that's not that far. All right. Which Good. I like. So we have the It'll five stars in Rise of Red Skull, and then and that's supposed to be in September, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is the next that is the next month. Um, and that's what I, I personally could take like. So the pendulum is swinging hard towards hero or towards villains. It at needs that to. Point. Yeah. Like I think those the five in the campaign plus Kang. Plus whatever the campaign introduces to string those together, I'm hoping they can. You can do that with any villain. Universal stringing together of scenarios. Yeah. The combination of those factors would would up the replayability like, through because even us, we obviously have been playing weekly. I think that's very fortunate to get to do. Yeah, that. that's unusual. Uh, but the recognition is like we're on the wrecking crew heroic. So we've we've played everything. We played it all on expert, and then now we're going back through on heroic and still finding a way to get through it. Yep. So it's about the time I feel like we need a lot more villains in the game. Once Red Skull hits, it really, I think that's actually the critical mass that the game needs to then at that point kind of like never get stale. Yep. Like you just have so many options at that point. It's all basically doubled at that point in the modular sets that you have access to. And then at that point, it's just like, all right, well, we can, we can go forever here. If the Red Skull campaign changes based on how it goes every time, yep. like even just minor changes, just like with Arkham, I think that ups the replayability quite a bit. 100%, so, yeah. man. I'm on it. Uh, all right, let's see if we got more. Stolen Memories, another obligation. This is from the Kang primary set, number 2443. Uh, it's a two uh, boost and <laughs> temporal. I couldn't think I of like word. this. Boost, yeah. <laughs> Winterville, place the top Ugh. eight cards of your deck face down under this card. Alter Ego ac action. Discard a mental resource from your hand. Discard this obligation. So he just takes eight cards. Eight cards off the top, man. And you can imagine... Uh, Stolen it, Memories. What a cool flavor. Yeah, which is cool. And is that Ultron's mask that he's holding? You're asking the wrong guy, man. I can't tell. I only just read Dune. I, I'm, I'm, I'm behind. I'm 50 years behind here. <laughs> I've only seen uh, Ragnarok, Iron Man 1. We're going to make that happen, by the way. And that one, didn't I have to watch... I watched one with uh, Robert recently with the time uh, rings... <laughs> I'm sorry, the, that's really embarrassing to say. Stone? The Infinity Stones. All uh, of them? The main guy. Uh, Thanos. Thanos, yeah. You it watched was the first one? Not the, not the end, not the finale. The one before the finale, I think. Was there no, any... no, 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 not the snap one. The one before the snap one. Ultron. No. Maybe I did watch the snap on. one. It was huh. Ultron. Ultron was the second I saw one. Doctor Strange too. I saw Black Panther. I've, mm -hmm. seen, I've seen my fair share. I just haven't really followed the saga like I should. Who? I'm trying to remember who the first Infinity Oh, Gauntlet the first Center. one was Loki was the main villain. So this is this one. I remember the Guardians were involved, and they almost got the the Infinity Gauntlet, and then it was kind of tragic how it all happened, and you know there was no snapping involved. Well, maybe there was at the end. I don't quite remember. That's the only one with all the stones. Did something yeah. bad happen to Vision? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, the that's first. The you okay, only seen yeah. that one. You haven't seen the other one. I haven't seen the second one. No. The final, the finale. I was satisfied with that finale. <laughs> Leaving the theater when that happened. Thank you, Infinity Wars. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's right. Leaving the theater after the snap, I expected it, um, but like everyone around, it was just like quiet. Yeah. 
Especially because there was a, like, Peter Parker, like, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark, and then he just disappears. It's like, mm. eh. Anyways, um, is that it? Are, that's it. That's besides it the, the article. So, Kang. Wow. This is actually probably the best scenario pack that I've seen in terms of just, like, expressing new ideas, uh, giving new possibilities with the modular sets, adding Kang as a modular set addition. I think it's super smart. Having little mini challenges for everyone at the table. I mean, like... Just continue to explore what the game can do. I like it. Well, and I, I feel like the macro strategy here from Fantasy Flight is very smart, which is they didn't start with the campaign. They didn't start with these complicated villains, right? We just got through playing seven weeks against Rhino. Yeah. And it's one stage, super straightforward. You go to the second villain, and it's Claw, and like he's putting a little more pressure on the, the deck and the acceleration tokens and stuff. Then you go to the last stage, and it's Ultron. Yeah. And now it's like, what do you do when you have a bunch of enemies out? Like, it just keeps coming, and you just all these things attacking you. And then from there, right, we move to Goblin, who has the interesting, like, fr from, mm -hmm. uh, you know... Doing the alter ego the, hero the, mode. The, the various basically. modes. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was two scenarios mm -hmm. that were tied together, right? It was the, the two pieces of the Goblin scenarios. And then we did the Wrecking Crew, mm -hmm. which is there's four different things that we're fighting against. Um, and we're kind of doing that thing. Now we're stepping up to, here's a five-stage campaign telling a story. Yeah, and then right after that, we're saying, "Here's a one-shot villain," but like, this is crazy. But it gets it gets nuts, and like that, all of that, right, gets me super excited because I know when Boggs was here for Champions Weekend, it was like, he was talking about them being on like Hero twenty three or twenty four, like design wise. Insane. At the time. I mean, that's like really ahead. Yeah, I mean, you got to be thinking about it, right? It's really and ahead. I think hmm. that's where like we see something like Doctor Strange, who obviously very much helped our case when it came to beating Rhino three. Uh, but you can look at like even this set where they have piercing as a keyword, and it's like one of the things that uh, Doctor Strange did is he could give tough to three of our characters. Yeah. And it's like, well, if a bunch of stuff has piercing coming up, it's like he might start looking a lot less insane, a lot different as we start moving to these various villains. So uh, I assume they've designed a bunch of heroes and villains all at the same time, and they're looking at it like we have these thirty heroes with all these cards available and all these villains. Make sure every hero has a role against certain villains and certain things that are, and that's what I get excited about because I even picture someone like Thor and it's like I think there are going to be places where he's really good mm -hmm. uh, Heroic 3 Rhino is not necessarily it not his uh, playground but I'm hopeful right that we end up seeing things like Loki will probably be a villain at some point right mm -hmm. uh, as like a main villain not just his uh, nemesis and it's like I assume whatever it is about his stats and his cards and what he's capable of will get uniquely challenged in certain ways and not every hero is just generically good all the time. Like, that's not how they're built. And that, what we're also seeing is, I think, classic FFG design philosophy, um, which has typically taken root in the player cards and the card pool, but I think we're seeing it universally here, which is that you're, as you're seeding new concepts into a card pool, you're also seeding potential answers to those concepts at the same time. So it doesn't even, like, it's like, oh, we're, we're being more liberal with tough on a hero like Doctor Strange. The, the villain didn't answer to a bunch of tough heroes. So I was like, well, we'll add piercing. And it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that like we expect Doctor Strange to be too strong or anything, but it's just like, well, if this is really good, then here's an answer that makes it less good. I think that's very smart, and they do that pretty well across the board. Yeah, and it just makes sure that there isn't generically, these are the two heroes you play every time to beat any scenario. Like, I like that idea, right? I, I would love there to be a scenario that like Cap and Iron Man are not good against. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Particularly. Like, you know, Iron Man is a great example. It's like, he's super powerful, but he has to ramp. So like Rhino, he was too slow on Rhino. He was too slow. Yeah. And also, kind of like his nemesis pod, if you ever get a villain that really penalizes upgrades, Iron Man's not your guy, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, Cap probably isn't your guy. Black Panther, not your guy. Yep. Uh, Miss Marvel or Gal? Maybe. Uh, those are Thor? all supports, Maybe. right? We'll see. That's the same kind of thing. So I love it. Super interesting. Uh, that said, anything else on King? Let's go stream some Wrecking Crew. I'm gonna turn this off and we'll be right back. Uh, so stick with us. You're gonna have to rejoin the chat, but don't lose hope uh, because it's very easy. We'll just have to click that button again. So we'll let it rest for about five minutes and then we'll be right back. Play some Wrecking Crew, explore some new heroes. I'm so excited. Don't give that. ourselves a challenge that we feel like we have to bang our head against for the rest of the year. See you guys in a second. And uh, we did mention it earlier, but worth noting, if you want to get uh, Kang and all future scenario packs automatically, check out our scenario pack subscription. We also have Hero Pack and Campaign Box subscriptions. You sign up. You don't pay anything now. You pay a week or two before it comes out. It shows up on your doorstep about the time it releases. Super easy. So check that out. Thank you guys all for being here, and we'll catch you on the Wrecking Crew video.